I remember reading that if you cut out all the pieces of the Bible that talked about compassion, that talked about showing up for people in need, that talked about being aware of or serving vulnerable or marginalized populations, you'd have a third of the Bible gone. One of the most powerful ways that I have seen people not just understand the word of God with their minds, but to encounter the heart of God with their own hearts has been through compassion, has been through being willing to let their hearts break the same way God's does has been a willingness to let themselves hurt with the hurting, to show up in the privileged space of people who might feel like they don't have a voice or are oppressed or experiencing poverty of some kind. I have found that this is a, a, a primary pathway of discipleship for many people in church. There are all kinds of spiritual disciplines. There are all paths of discipleship. This is one of them to truly put yourself in a position to, to walk humbly as Jesus did in the path of people in need, to allow yourself to have open hands. You know what you realize in that process? You're just as in need. That is a humbling part of discipleship and has been a tremendously um, humbling path of discipleship for so many in our community. My husband Troy and I are pastors at Capitol Church, and my husband Troy is the lead pastor, and we wanted to find an organization that we could partner with for global ministry, um, but we wanted something that would have long-term relationship, not just to pop in for one week or two weeks. We wanted something that would be long-term, where we could build upon relationship, and that was really important to us, and we were excited to find AIM and all that they are accomplishing across the world. And we saw a real need in the country of Eswatini in Africa. Um, we realized that this small country had the highest rate of HIV AIDS in the world and that there was just an epidemic going on and a lot of the children were left vulnerable because one or both parents um, were sick or had passed away from AIDS and we wanted to come and, and help and bring relief and bring hope. We saw a huge opportunity to love. Um, our very first team came, there was about 15 of them and they sat around the tree in Mkumakati and just played with children. And they began to share the stories and the opportunities that we could come and, and love on these children. They are beautiful souls. And um, it has really been an incredible opportunity for all of us. Partnering with AIM has given us an incredible opportunity for commitment. We are committed as a community to sponsor 100% of the children here at Mokomokati. And, and we've been able to accomplish that in, in beautiful ways um, because of the faithfulness of our community and, and their hearts for the, the people here in Eswatini. And we decided that we would come, but we would stay. And we have stayed all this time and we will continue to stay. Maybe for those of you thinking about whether or not this makes sense, because sometimes when God invites us to something, our brains are really good about thinking about barriers. They're really good about thinking, I can't do that in all areas of our lives. And sometimes we can't. And sometimes we know, we just sense and feel that Holy Spirit of God that's inviting us to something that feels risky, that feels big, that feels like it might have a lot of logistics involved, but that we sense it with a sense of anticipation and a sense of hope and a sense of, I gotta be obedient to this. And the responsibility that we can have as leaders to know there are lots of pieces that we need to be able to put into place. I am so glad we said yes. I am so glad we said yes to sending a bunch of folks 15 years ago, 10,000 miles away to a tree and to see now what it has grown into, 
what those little seeds 15 years ago have grown into. They've grown into buildings and they've grown into a computer lab I'm sitting in right now with some incredible members of our community. They've grown into a multi-purpose building and a playground and a garden and a well and all those things are so important and beautiful and have blessed this community. But they have grown into somebody a few minutes ago coming up to me and saying, probably a 20 something year old young woman, is Jess here? Jess was here. Jess was also here three years ago. Jess was also here five years ago. Jess was also seven years ago and she remembered Jess as a young girl. And I got to bring Jess out to meet her and they got to hug and talk about life and have that familiarity in that relationship that has grown too. These are the beautiful things God can do when we say yes. And I hope you do.